Well, this is Greg Bloria, a.k.a. Social Greg on Twitter. This is the Nerd Stalker Tech Me podcast number 42, and you are? I am Adolfo Veranda at Nerd Stalker on Twitter. <laughs> How you doing, Greg, man? How are you, man? Lots of stuff to talk about. Yeah, I, a lot of stuff. There's been huge announcements from the big dogs, you know, Apple, Microsoft, oh, Google, yes. but especially Apple and Microsoft. Well, let's talk about the big dogs, huh? <laughs> let's do it, man. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> Apple came out, you know, throwing punches immediately. They announced everything, basically, right? So we have uh, a mini, an iPad, a MacBook Pro, a new iMac, um, uh, iBooks. <laughs> yes, iBooks. <laughs> iBooks. Faster Faster mini. Yeah. <laughs> and a faster mini. But yeah, the big story, obviously, well, actually, there was a couple big and controversial controversial stories. One was like, um, okay, let's, let's wait on the mini a little bit here. The, the new iPad, okay. right? So the new iPad. Yes. I bought my mom the new iP- uh, iPad 3, day one. Uh, so when I saw this, I was like, uh, you know, I should have... I should have uh, gazelled it or whatever immediately, like put it on Craigslist or something, you know, ASAP, right as he was talking, uh, but I hesitated. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, eh, maybe I can use this thing, which I can. It's a fantastic device. But anyways, um, yeah, so the new iPad, is, uh, it's got lightning. It's got it's double the speed, basically, super fast. It's A6X yes. chip in it. Um, yes. So your thoughts on that, Greg? <laughs> the, the new iPad or no, the mini? No, no the uh, new iPad. <laughs> No, no, I've had. Hey, yeah, I, I, I think um, it was interesting that they, they, they actually, you know, killed the iPad three really quickly. I, I mean, like you said, I think it was what was it, four or five months? Maybe. Gosh, most, yeah. Maybe. Yeah, Something I'm like hearing that. six. Maybe I don't know. It doesn't feel yeah, like six. six though. Yeah, it's probably six. Wow. Yeah, I think it was really quick. I, you know, I don't know. You know, I think that that lightning connector needed to move to the market quickly. <laughs> yeah, I suppose. <laughs> I you know, I, in a way, though, I'm I'm uh, I'm sh- I'm a little bit shocked that they're getting flack for this because you know everyone always uh, raves about oh the good thing on being on Android is that you have this fast release cycle and all these new revved up things. But that's also a complaint of a lot of people is that they iterate too fast and your device yes. is a is antiquated yeah. by the time you buy it because there's another manufacturer who made some new device. So I'm a little bit surprised at the criticism at, uh, against Apple on this in a way because i like fast iteration i want new apple stuff coming out so we have cool stuff to talk about and new technology and to see them be on par with uh other devices you know oh and we don't if it's a wireless device i mean you know on wireless we don't have to wait for our two-year damn contract to run out right yeah yeah so, yeah yeah unless so, yeah unless so, you bought yeah. the cell plan ipad or <laughs> yeah right or yeah, nexus LTE. or something well they, 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 oh, we'll talk about that. I think yeah. they have the LTE versions, right? Yep, so, that's right. I mean, that's that's right. A, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. So right? the that Mac Mini, Ma- the, speaking of LTE, yeah, but uh, the Mac Mini has LTE uh, if you get that version. But the entry-level 16-gigabyte Wi-Fi version will be going for $329. A lot of people were shocked about that price. They thought they would try to be a little more aggressive and, and meet that $199 uh, price point of, like, the Kindle you know, Fire, the Nexus 7, I believe. I don't know. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, so... Uh, you know, as someone said to me, you know, uh, this, uh, I, I heard uh, I more say that they had an eight gigabyte version they were thinking about rolling out uh, at that price mm. point that they decided not to. And uh, I sort of came to this realization, I think, way late to the game because everyone has that. Once you're sort of within an ecosystem, once you're committed to iOS and you, you buy mm. apps and you go mm. through iTunes for your music and, and blah, blah, blah. Um, that you're sort of, you're, you know, it's, it almost doesn't matter on the device and the manufacturer anymore. You're, you're within them. So you're within the Apple world. And I think with Android, you're, it's the same sort of thing. You're using Google play probably, uh, for right. all your stuff, your music and et cetera, yeah, et cetera. Exactly. Although you have tons of, you know, um, manufacturers options, it's all Android, right? It's all Android. Right. And then you right. have, uh, Amazon who basically forked Android, but it's really just sort of like a uh, consumer device to, to buy stuff from the Amazon store. Um, they don't have a lot of options there. I mean, and we're going to talk about our, our other um, non-option store, which yeah. is called Microsoft, but yeah. uh, later. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. but you know, it, it, hey, it's lighter uh, than the uh, Kindle Fire HD and the uh, Nexus 7s and thinner. Yeah, yeah. God, how much more would you want? I mean, geez, it definitely. On, right? Yeah, from what I've been hearing and reading also, uh, it's, you know, it's manufactured, uh, obviously top of the line, you know, sort of like the iPhone 5, you know, and... None of this plastic stuff of the Nexus 7, although the Nexus 7 feels good and stuff like that. It's uh, This device is a little more high-end, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, so another thing that they announced was the 13-inch MacBook Pro, 3.6 pounds, 1699 price point. 
very attractive uh, uh, option for, I think, for travelers who were mm -hmm. hedging, you know, who have typically been traveling with their iPad plus a laptop kind of thing. Sure. I, I think this could be their all-in-one if you're, you're a serious user now. Um, right, right, right. So, yeah, very, very yeah. nice. Yeah. Uh, they 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 introduced that new um, um, iMac, right? So oh yeah, super flat iMac, looking good, man. Ooh, it's a beautiful sexy, thing, man. yeah. Beautiful sexy. piece of uh, you know. No more disc inside of it, right? No more Blu-ray disc or or whatever disc. Any yeah, no more CDs, yeah. as they call it. If no. you people living in no. the past is what they said on stage. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, so like you said, to revved up Mac Minis and server faster, nice. I love the Mini myself. I got a soft spot in my heart for it uh, because I use it as my uh, Xbox Media Center, my HD, you know, yeah, my you home theater. Check Media this Center. stuff out, man. Super fun. Really and cool. they announced iBooks. Yeah, you know, uh, <laughs> upgrade to iBooks. So good for that. Um, yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's well, an interesting sort of weird uh, announcement of all this stuff at an odd time. There's been uh, some some pundits saying that this is all preparation for bigger stuff that they're going to announce next year, more exciting kind of stuff. Because this is sort of a point one sort of upgrade to a lot of this stuff. Although some right. of it is quite serious. I mean, the iMac uh, looks it you know very revved up, and the 13 inch MacBook Pro. Everyone's been waiting for that, anyways. But on to Microsoft. Okay, let's do it. Well, you know, we had Microsoft uh, introduce the the service. Yeah, finally. yeah. So I'm sure finally. all these people have finally. been seeing this this uh, this thing, the uh, tablet. If you're a Microsoft user and fan, <laughs> uh, good for you, man, because this is, looks like a nice piece of hardware. Um, <clears throat> limited app, supposedly. The software is so so. I hear. Um, yeah. The, there's no Google search, so you probably won't care if you're a Bing user, um, but I would care because I use Google search a lot. Um, I hear it's one of the versions of the, I'm not, I don't know if RT does, it has a fan in it, actually. <laughs> um, yeah. The case uh, will cost you extra. We'll get to that, but it doesn't quite stay yeah. shut um, when you're yeah, holding exactly. it a certain way. It kind of flaps exactly. open, uh, which is a little odd. So you it's just got to hold it the other top. way. It isn't a laptop, right? Yeah, yeah. It's so it's no, tabletop. there's no lap usage, right? right? So you don't, you know, right. you can't put it in your lap kind I of mean, thing with the roll up thing. It's, it's, uh, it's weird like that. Yeah. And it's expensive. No. It's, it's 499, uh, starting point for the, uh, RT version. And that's another and thing. Then, they have something called RT, which is a whole RT line. You know, that's starting four ninety nine right. goes up to I think six ninety nine or something like that for the RT. Right. And they have a non RT RT version. So very confusing. Well, and and really with the keyboard, if you're going to use it as a desktop, you know, it's really one hundred thirty dollars plus, right? So you're at the six. Yeah. 650, 630 price point yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, which is still cheap in the, the door. ultra book. Yeah. Yeah, but true. Um, you know, and and there's a bunch of rumors on the street that you know they're going to introduce another <clears throat> surface. You mm. know, by the end of the year. Uh, you know, mm. um, so they just want to get into the game, and you know, the game is get the Christmas sales right. Mm. But mm -hmm. but a lot of people say very good things about it. The, uh, we'll put on on um, our website. Uh, Wired has a really good video. You guys, mm. you guys should really look at that one. It really goes through all the things. Uh, this little kickstand thing in the mm -hmm. back, as, as Adolfo was saying, you know, it's kind of interesting, you know, but, mm -hmm. um, uh, but you know, that's how you use it. Right. And, yeah, um, yeah. but, 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 you, you know, a lot of people told me what you had saw last year at the developers conference, the, the swiping is really nice. Yeah. That <laughs> it's is quite nice. Really yeah. Smooth. Like I said, um, if you're an Outlook user, you're going to love this type of thing. If you're a Bing user, you're going to love this. If you're an IE, Internet Explorer user, you're going to love this thing. Um, <clears throat> if you're not those things, then, you know, I, you know, this all goes back to you're kind of stuck in your ecosystem kind of thing. You know, the best Google experience yeah. tends to be on Android. The best Apple experience tends to be on Apple type of stuff. And now Microsoft has its answer as well. And in distant... Well, actually, the, the third place I would actually give that to Amazon at this point. Um, but yeah, n the other big news is Windows 8, man. So Windows 8 was oh, announced. Yeah. Uh, oh, they're yeah. selling it for 70 bucks uh, for the operating system. <laughs> Already hearing everyone complain about not being able to find the start menu and this and that, you know, uh, that they, they need to, to learn. Uh, not all applications on Windows 8 are going to work on your Surface also, RT. You should yes. be aware of that. So your desktop version yes, of uh, yes. Outlook or whatever, or Excel, 
um, <clears throat> will not work on your RT version of Excel uh, and et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, so this one uh, <laughs> comes from uh, Dan Graziano of Boy Genius Reports, Nokia. On Tuesday, announced that it'll be, ha it'll be issuing a new batch of convertible bonds that it hopes will generate 750 million euros, or roughly 980 mm. million dollars. Uh, the once dominant cell phone vendor has posted a loss in six consecutive quarters. Man, not good, and continues to burn through its cash reserves. Um, <clears throat> Nokia executive vice president and CFO says that the company's actions have been designed to further strengthen our financial position, blah, 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 current attractive long-term opportunities, blah, blah. Uh, the net proceeds <laughs> generated from the bonds, which are set to become Nokia shares in 2017, will assist the company in managing its capital structure and help it proactively address its upcoming debt while preserving a uh, existing assets. So, uh, <clears throat> you know, they're taking a loan <laughs> is essentially what they're doing. They're mortgaging themselves. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, Absolutely. this is not good. This is uh, they're betting the farm now. Yeah, yeah. So this the is blood. This done. is blood in the water, really. Is what this is, you know? Yeah. Well, I, I, I you think they're gonna get bought? Uh, I mean, you, know, you think Microsoft is gonna bite the bullet and buy them, or what do you think? I don't think. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't think they have an option. I, I think that is their only option, actually, is to to just flat out uh, take over and start manufacturing their own phones. Um, yeah, how the other you know, manufacturers will take that, we'll see. Uh, you know, I, I expect yeah, to see cool. multiple uh, manufacturers coming out with service type devices and phones, mm. Windows phone devices as well. I mean, but they're already doing that with Android. So, um, yeah, a tough proposition. Well, yeah. So, Greg, uh, next story, okay. man. French media. What's it? What's oh. this? What's this about? <laughs> Well, the French seem to have an appetite for regulating the Internet, as you know, and then going after Google in particular. So uh, this is from Joe Mullen of ARS Technica. Uh, thank you for that. Um, so a new proposed law uh, in France would force Google to make payments when French media show up in news searches. Can you believe that? Yeah. Uh, and it's kind of it was kind of interesting, actually. I thought that's why I wanted to bring it up. Um, you know, uh, and Google responded to him that, you know, we can't accept this. <laughs> Are you crazy? Mm. And basically what they said was, you know, okay, you guys pass the law, we'll remove all the media from all our searches. <laughs> <Whoa>. <laughs> Isn't that, and so so there's there's this interesting power play going on here uh. in France, you know, and, and, and the French government, you know, you know, they they're not gonna take crap from uh, Google either, mm. you know, so, that, you know, because they're being held up. Mm. But the, the law is basically is that, like I said, they're thinking of passing a law that will, um, for every time Google uses a, a media a content uh, in their search engine, they, they owe that person who they got the content from a certain amount of money by clicks or whatever you want to call it. Um, I thought it was just interesting because it, 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 it shows – where the leverage is now in the world, yeah, right, with yeah. Google search, right? And this right? is it, it this isn't is about, another sort yeah. of indication of like uh, I've heard like a lot of entrepreneurs come from France saying, "Hey, we have a really hard time starting tech businesses in France," and and seeing this sort of relationship, you know, with with Google is not an encouraging sign for their, you know, their ecosystem of you know entrepreneurship and tech entrepreneurship, especially. Oh. Oh, the French are going to do everything by themselves now, right? And so it's going to be, okay, we're going to have our own search engine. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we're guess, going to have this other one. I, I mean, you know, I mean, you know, if they pass that law, I mean, it doesn't really, it applies not only to Google, but it's Bing, anyone who has a search engine, right? So it isn't just Google. Google's the biggest. Yeah. You know, it isn't a Google law they're, they're passing. It's just whoever does search and they use their content. And mm. I think it's, 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 uh, it's crazy, you know, and, um, you know, I think uh, back in 2007, this article goes on to say that, you know, Google already has like a licensing deal with a, a, a French press uh, agency. Hmm. Um, and, um, you know, right after the, that agency filed a lawsuit uh, because Google used snippets uh, violating their copyright, they said. So I, wow. yeah, this is interesting, right? I mean, um, you know, in this country, we seem to not really worry about that too much, mm -hmm. but, you know, this is really, again, another, like a Microsoft story earlier, it's a Hail Mary pass, right? Because, you know, all these traditional media agencies are losing money, uh -huh. uh, like, you know, out the yin yang. Yeah. So they're, they're trying to figure out how to get any money and, and you know, and, and 
uh, you know, ne- uh, neuter the people who have the power, which is Google, right? Yeah, yeah. So, well, let's Good go on to your next story. Uh, Uber co-founder Garrett Camp's black jet is Uber for private planes. Yeah, so, so, what's up yeah. With that so, one? thanks to all things D Liz Gaines for this story. Uh, black jet launches today, a way to book seats on other people's private jets. Uh, if it sounds like the black car service Uber for planes, that's exactly what it is, as well as Gaines says. The company from uh, Uber co-founder Gary Camp, who is leading product development and is the lead investor in a funding round worth the single-digit millions. Uh, along with Camp, Uber investor Shervin Preshvin and a lot of celebrities like Ashton Kutcher, uh, Madonna, Will Smith's uh, entertainment company, and 15 other Silicon Valley uh, rock star whatever VCs. Uh, Blackjet <laughs> isn't the first startup to try to democratize private air travel. I was going to say, this isn't the first time I've seen other uh, startups try mm-hmm. uh, that, that are doing this. Uh, another one currently in the market with uh, venture funding is called Surf Air. And in fact, the camp-backed company evolved out of a previous startup known as Green Jets. It actually mm-hmm. uh, still has the same CEO, a longtime aviation guy named Dean Roshan. Um, <clears throat> Blackjet wants to appeal to people who are sick of commercial air travel's delays and hassles and are willing to pay to escape the security lines and crying babies. Um, the company <laughs> won't own its own planes, but uh, will help match pilots and passengers a la Uber. Um, so, you know, um, this this sounds like a good idea. This is probably out of our price point at this point, Greg. Uh, but uh, it's yeah. out there for you yeah. people. Who I don't think we're gonna to do that. You know, maybe 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 with private planes we create an uh, Airbnb, huh? I want a I want a plane full of screaming babies. Airlines. That's what I want. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, that's so funny. They mentioned that. Oh gosh. Well, you know, guy, I, you know, it just makes sense. You know, I mean, utilization is the key, right? Yeah. And anything that that that's requires, true. yeah, excess you know, capacity. Right? So yeah, same. Yeah. That's the whole concept. You know, and it, not a bit, not a bad a, business model. Speed round. <laughs> <laughs> I love speed round. Okay, you're first up, my friend. So yeah, Waze boosted its market share to 10% of U.S. iPhone users from 7%. That sounds small, but of all U.S. iPhone that's users, that's a lot of people. Yeah. Uh, Waze said last yeah. month that it had 26 million users, up from 10 million nice. at the beginning of the year. Apple even has a relationship with the company, presumably for feeding data into the main Maps app. That's what I've heard, too. But neither company has disclosed the nature of that partnership. Uh, immediately after Apple yeah. released and then apologized for its Maps app, uh, way, try to say that quickly, Maps app, Maps app. Um, right, that's right, that's right. Waze said its daily downloads jumped from 70,000 per day to 100,000 downloads per day. It looks like uh, more than a few of these new users are actually sticking around, me being one of them. I've been a proponent of Waze for some time now. Uh, We saw them present at SF New Tech. Uh, I prefer it over since day one. Even on Android, uh, I used Waze. Um, It's my GPS of choice. Well, Amazon pushes Kindle to kindergarten kids in the U.S. So, um, you know, Amazon is hoping uh, for a slice of the educational market, uh, says uh, Addy Dugdale of uh, Fast Company. So uh, on October 17th, uh, Amazon unveiled Whispercast, a service that allows organizations such as businesses and schools to manage numerous Kindles uh, from one online location. So I, I thought... That was kind of cool, but, you know, with the announcement of the iPad Mini, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. you know, I wonder if they uh, took the air out of that balloon. Mm. But, um, you know, I, I think that was kind of an interesting thing. You yeah. know, if you go to their website, uh, you know, uh, whispercast.amazon.com, you'll get all the features that this uh, new new thing has, you know, with Amazon. Whispercast, you know, uh-huh. Amazon. Manage your Kindles, distribute Kindle content uh, from one place. Uh, it has some interesting features, you know. So if you want to bring Kindle to your classroom, here's a way to do it. Cool. Manage it from one place. So Okay, right. let's go. Yeah, so get a copy of the web. <laughs> so thanks to <laughs> yeah, what? an entire copy of the web, yeah. So boing boing, Cory Doctorow actually said uh, this is actually available. Want 80 terabytes of web crawl? The Internet Archive will give you a copy of... Uh, the web for research purposes quote we would like to experiment with offering access to one of our crawls from 2011 
with about 80 terabytes of work files containing captures of about 2.7 billion URIs, or web pages, if you want to call them that. Uh, the files contain Jeez. text and wow. media that we were able to capture, including images, flash, videos, etc. So a very interesting uh, option uh, for those of you that are interested in uh, this kind of stuff. This could be a really cool uh, big data type of experiment, you know. If you're one of those Hadoop types or something, or hypertable types, a uh, really interesting proposition here. Thank you, Internet Archive. Wow. Appreciate that. Do you know that October is National Cybersecurity Awareness Month? Ah. You didn't know that, did you? It's not October first. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, this is, comes from uh, Julie Cohn from uh, Entrepreneur Magazine, believe it or not. Right. Um, and so... Uh, you know, FCC has issued an update to uh, which I didn't know about. It's called the Small Biz Cyber Planner. Yeah, uh, very nice. Uh, the planner was created last year as a free online resource for small business owners to who want to beef up their security against cyber attacks. I, I thought it was really kind of cool. Yeah, it's nice. Um, using a tool, uh, you know, the business owners can create and download um, uh, cybersecurity plans tailored to their company. So mm -hmm. they answer roughly about a dozen questions uh, from like. Does your business use credit cards? Yeah. Do does your business have uh, a public website? Mm -hmm. And then you know, based on those questions, they generate you know some some uh, custom guide for you. So I thought that was kind of cool to mention on our speed round. Yeah, that's this week, great because so. uh, small businesses they typically don't think about security. You know, when you're just starting an online Never. presence, and uh, Never. so it's totally low hanging fruit for you know for these hackers and stuff like that to to get that type of information. Um, they're moving away from enterprise type of hacking now, you know, since uh, uh, enterprises and big companies seem to be securing more and more and more. Um, so, yeah, these small businesses are, are, you know, ripe for the taking. So good good for oh, the FCC. Yeah. Tip time, tip time. <laughs> You're up first. Yeah, my so my tip, thanks to Brad Reed from uh, Boy Genius Reports, a uh, new Chrome extension replaces your friend's political Facebook rants with pictures of cute kittens. <laughs> So, people, this thing is fantastic. Uh, I'm oh sure, you know, uh, so he says there are two kinds of Facebook users out there, which I believe. Uh, those who use their pages as political soapboxes and those who are sick of people who use their pages as political soapboxes. Uh, for the latter group, the folks at BuzzFeed and unbaby.me have helped create a new extension for Google Chrome that blocks political messages from both your Facebook and Twitter feeds and replaces them with happier things, such as pictures of cute cats. The extension is free to download and promises users that it will help them enjoy an Obama and Romney free life. Time to time. Well, I, I, you know, we did an interview this week of, um, you know, Mark W. Shaper. He has this best-selling mm. book, The Tao of Twitter, and I suggest it's a really good read, um, you know, for people who not only use Twitter on a regular basis, mm -hmm. but, you know, who are just entering. You know, there's probably not too many people in that, in that realm yet now, but I think uh, it, it was really good. He, you know, I, we, we were joking because I call him Woody Kawasaki. He has the humor of Woody Allen and the passion of uh, Guy, Guy Kawasaki. Kawasaki. So, <laughs> okay, cool, man. So, yeah, I like so that I, interview. You guys I, should listen to it. Go to nerdstalker.com, look for Greg's interview there with, uh, yeah, yeah, with the Tao Twitter. I, I, and uh, fantastic. And, and pick up that book. Pick up that book. It's available on uh, iBooks, yeah. which just came out, um, the iBook store, um, Kindle, and Nook. And you can get it on um, a hard copy of Amazon.com <laughs> or um, on mhprofessional.com, which is the McGraw Hill uh, uh, e commerce site for books. So, uh, anyway, yeah, catch that and uh, you know, uh, listen to the interview. Uh, we really had a lot of fun on that interview, so it was good. Yeah. So also, I'd okay. like to say one quick thing. Uh, I want to thank uh, Tech Shop. I went today to do a, an Electric Imp. This is the shirt here, uh, the company Electric oh, yeah, Imp. They make yeah, this, uh, yeah. this card that, that basically has Wi-Fi. You can Webify anything. Fantastic. Had a blast. Uh, thanks to the uh, Electric Imp team and uh, Tech Shop uh, San Francisco for uh, hosting that event for nice. free. Uh, we had drinks and pizza and stuff like that. Uh, learned how to nice. hack a hack a little, you know, electric imp and a board, and s did some soldering. My soldering is very rusty, uh, but they they helped <laughs> a guy who was struggling along uh, to go talk to the internet, come back and light up a an LED, you know, which was nice. super great. So, well, anyways, isn't that man. the T-shirt you have on right now? Yeah, yeah, it's electric. Is it a electric imp, guys. I and, love it. And love uh, it. Greg is hopefully wearing the Future World Series uh, by the time uh, you watch this. Uh, winners, uh, <laughs> the San Francisco Giants. Yeah. But I digress. San uh, Francisco Giants with the Tokyo Giants. We Thank love you, Detroit. Also, <laughs> anyway. Yeah. yeah man. So events coming Sorry. up, man. SF New Tech. What's happening? 
Yeah. Well, we got SF New Tech on uh, November seventh. Uh, it's the it's a mobile edition. It's called Go Mobile. It'll have uh, companies like uh, Tab Canvas, Criticism, uh, Playground.fm, Desti, Stay Stay com, uh, Voyism, and and others. So uh, Criticism, you know, <laughs> Criticism, Criticism, Criticism. <laughs> I guess I love it. Criticism. Right. Yeah. So uh, there's a lot of sisms out there. Yeah. Um, but uh, <laughs> but anyway, yeah. Join us. Uh, doors open at 5:30, as they always at 119 Utah Street at Mighty Nightclub in San Francisco. And the pitches start at 7:30, and we usually have a uh, pre-show, uh, which if uh, Adolfo shows up, we'll, we'll talk about some of the things that can. week or we'll yeah, talk about that stuff yeah yeah, yeah. and and so and yeah we usually have fun so yeah. catch that on uh, sfnewtech.com uh, right on that front page if you can't make it you can watch it on Ustream. that's so. right so people anyway. if you want to contribute to nerd stalker please on twitter use the hashtag nrdstk uh that's how we get some of our stories here and uh or go check out nerdstalker.com or even better go to itunes and just subscribe for our audio or video podcast and give us a nice five star rating that would be fantastic and uh, or check us our at our youtube channel at nerdstalker tv just do a search for Nerd Stalker TV, all one word, and uh, yes. catch our 24 by 7 channel on iBroadcast TV, right, Greg? Yes, yes, nice. 24 by 7. All I load up all the latest podcasts and uh, between music and podcasts. What else do you what need? Else do you so, need? And, and also <laughs> catch, catch our uh, new uh, podcast that we were we, we just launched a couple weeks ago called uh, Social, Social Time. Social Time, yeah. Uh, yeah. With social media Sean, Sean Charles, That's and awesome. myself. So we talk nothing about social media. So we're, we're devoting this channel now entirely to tech. So it's good. So we have tech covered and we have social covered. Yeah, so fantastic. It's good. So. Anyway, so how do they reach you, my friend? You can reach me at NerdStalker on Twitter, uh, or you can just feel free to give me an email at Adolfo, A-D-O-L-F-O, at NerdStalker.com. How about you, Greg? Well, you can reach me on Twitter at SocialGreg, or you can reach me at SocialGreg at NerdStalker.com, uh, or you can Facebook me uh, on the NerdStalker uh, Facebook page. Hey, um, I'll awesome. answer all of the things That's that right. you have there, too, as well. So, yeah. And so our anyway, Google Plus uh, page, too. Oh, gosh, yeah, Google Plus, you know. And, and in <laughs> fact, I just wanted to mention, Social Time is on Google Plus, so you could hang out with us that's there. That's right, so. that's right. It's good. So anyway, yeah, I, you, you guys be careful out there. Have a good week. Hey, thanks for watching and listening, everyone. That is it. You're hearing from my lawyers. <laughs> oh, Greg. Oh, <laughs> Greg. Luckily, uh, luckily, uh, <laughs> we weren't very good at that, at that run. Oh, man. All right, wake up.